All right, guys. Welcome to Thursday's class. Um, we are going to do something a little bit more slow to go today. I'm definitely feeling a little lethargic, and um, I know Gavin requested some hip opening, so we'll see how this feels. We're going to move a little bit in the beginning and then kind of slow it down. You might want to have blankets, blocks. If you don't have um, already a strap, grab something like a belt or something that's longer, even a shirt that you can stretch out, or if you have a broomstick that you can take the broom off of, grab that too. We're gonna play with some shoulder opening. Um, and then we're just gonna get started. So let's go ahead and come to a seat or a child's pose, whatever you want. I'm gonna sit upright with my knees on a blanket and my butt on a block. And I'm just gonna read you guys an excerpt of this book that's pretty dope. It's called A Beginner's Guide to Constructing the Universe, The Mathematical Archetypes of Nature, Art, and Science. And this excerpt is just cool. Um, I think it gives us some good metaphors and whatnot, which are always fun in, in our meditation. So we'll just kind of lean into this a little bit during the practice. Nature's forms represent invisible forces made visible. The force of the circle's equal expansion works through the different materials. Tap the side of a round cup of liquid and watch as the perfect concentric rings appear and converge in the center, then pass it and expand outward again. Nature delights in the principle of equal expansion in, concentr in concentric ripples, splashes, craters, bubbles, flowers, and exploding stars. As you open your compass, Consider that you are metaphorically repeating this first principle of the monad, the opening of light, space, time, and power in all directions. And this is a quote from R. Buckminster Fuller, and I really like this a lot. It says, the wave is not the water. The water merely told us about the wave moving by. Right, so this idea of expansion, of moving out from the center, rippling, energetically moving consistently and allowing yourself just to exist in that space, listening. So if you haven't already done so, connect with your breath and center yourself around the ripple of it. Exhale everything out. Take a deep, deep breath in. And then empty completely. Start to generate a little bit of movement or even just the idea of movement. So it kind of starts in your brain. But if you put it onto the body, kind of play with stuff like wiggling fingers, opening the mouth. Wiggling the nose, maybe the brow line. Check in with the choices you're making and how the breath might be evolving into them. Take one more big breath where you are. And exhale. Good. Now, whatever shape you're in, you're going to come to a position like I am, sitting on your seat with the knees underneath you. So if you're in child's pose, you just come up. If you're on your butt, just shift out. And you can always lift your seat up a little higher with a block if your knees are bothering you. We're going to move a little bit. So we're going to move through some salutes, some slow salutes, a different variation on them. So from here, we're going to take the arms either forward or out. You're going to inhale arms over the head. And then your exhale is going to flip the palms. You're going to reach down, child's pose, lengthened. Take a moment just to be in that with a, with a little bit more energy to it. So you may not put your forehead down. 
You may have to work with dogs next to you like Gavin is. <laughs> Good. From there, you're going to inhale forward to your hands, straight arms, and let your hips go down. Take an up dog. And this is nice and slow. So you can move this around too. Pushing the ground away, shrugging the shoulders down, bending the elbows back, pushing through the fingertips. Now from here, you're gonna tuck the toes under, lift the hips back to a down dog with bent knees. Head heavy, shift around. Good, take a breath in and a breath out. On your inhale, we're gonna step the right foot through, soften the tips of your fingers. Let your back knee bend a little bit. Don't necessarily put it down though. Inhale, look up and then exhale, fold and step to the top of your mat. And on your next breath, you're gonna roll all the way up Nice and slow. Take a breath in, just lift your arms up. And then exhale, fold all the way down. You're gonna take a gentle step back with the opposite leg, so right leg back for us. Soften the back knee, take a breath in, look up. On your exhale, step back to down dog. Take another moment there. Inhale forward to plank position. Exhale, optional chaturanga halfway all the way with knees modify as necessary. Back bend. And then you're gonna put your knees down, take it back to that child's pose. And then you're gonna take your arms back by the waist. We're gonna pause there, breathe along that full span of your back, like think like tortoise, tortoise shell. Good, roll up to the top of your seat. Inhale, arms up. And exhale, reach long. Inhale, swim through, find your up dog. Take an extra moment again. And then go back to down dog. Bending the knees. Take your left foot through this time. Inhale. Soften the back knee. Get the full stretch of that front line. When your next exhale happens, step to your forward fold. Hang heavy. Inhale, roll all the way up. You can reach to the arms in whatever direction works. Stretch. Fold all the way down. Take the left leg back this time, so right leg is forward, so you're switching legs. Inhale, looking up, stretching the front thigh. Exhale, down dog. Inhale forward to your plank. Exhale, halfway all the way and use your knees. Back bend, stretch the front. And then exhale, knees down. Take the elongated child's pose and then bring the arms back again. So this movement should feel a little wave-like, right? Nice and slow. We're not rushing the breath. You can take as much time through each breath as you want, but let the body swim forward, back up and down. Inhale, rolling up. Reach through your arms. Exhale, lengthen and stretch. Inhale, pull forward, take your up dog. And then exhale, back to down dog. We're gonna go right leg through. Step it. Breathe in, stretch the heart forward. And then exhale, full step, top of the mat. Inhale, stand all the way up. And then exhale, fold all the way down. Good, take the right leg back, opposite leg forward, inhale, bend that back knee slightly. 
And exhale, down dog. Inhale to plank. Exhale, down. Back bend with a breath in. Put the knees down, exhale, elongate the arms as you go back. And then take the arms by the sides. One more round. Inhale, rolling up, stretch. And exhale, fold it down. Inhale, pull forward, up dog. Ripple it. Tuck the toes, back to down dog. Left foot forward. Soften the back knee, stretch the chest. Step forward. Standing up with a big breath in. Folding down, exhale. Step the left leg back. Soften the knee, looking up with a breath. And then exhale back to down dog. Inhale to plank. Exhale down. Back bend, inhale. Exhale, hips back. Pause in that elongated child's pose. So you can definitely let the head go down. If you have a block, you can put the head on the block. If you have two blocks in front of you, you could put two hands on each block and use that for a little bit more shoulder opening. But try to keep a little bit more energy through the reach of your arms if you can. So think of this as a way of getting to the side body's movement. So it's not just top of the shoulder going anywhere, it's really lengthening the full torso forward. Take another big breath. On your exhale, slowly take your arms back by the sides. Then we're gonna inhale, roll up. Reach through the arms. Exhale, start to fold forward again. Look where you're going this time. We're gonna come up to the hands. Pause there. So you should already be at a distance where you're a little bit more forward from the knees with your hips and the hands are under the shoulders. Let's take the right leg, step it on the outside of your right hand. And you're gonna use the distance of heel of hand to heel of foot. So I don't know if you can kind of see the alignment there. And then um, if you start to find that you're swiveling the hips a lot, you can always come up to blocks. So, oops, if you need a little bit more height, lifting up taller can help. We're just gonna sit here for a few breaths. Try to keep the, the, the toes pointing with the fingertips for now so we're not going too deep too quickly. And if you can, try not to drop your head. For now, try to keep the length of your, of your chest moving. And we're both using a blanket on that back knee to give us a little bit more cushion so it feels really nice. It will hire the leg though too behind you. So just do what feels best for your knee. And then just notice if you can continue to find that cyclical quality of breath, right? So even though we're not necessarily moving through space, we're still maintaining a wave-like movement through the body. The energy of the shape ripples outwards. You can stay with this. If you wanna go a little bit more external, you rotate your right toes out, keep the heel where it is. You can come to where you're flipping off of the sole of your foot with a strong ankle, the knee separates, and then you can go a little farther out and lower down more if you want.
You might find you can go a little deeper here and there. Notice if your body pushes against you, right? Listen to those reactions so that you are really holding the integrity of the stretch and not letting yourself push past any points. I'm going to slowly open these spaces, right? If you pull too fast, you can rip things. It's a little bit like pulling on a plastic bag. Like if you want to pull and stretch the bag, you pull slow. But if you just pull, it, it rips quite easily. You can maintain the stretch if you go slower over time. From here, you can, again, stay where you are. If you want to do a little bit more deepening isolation, we're going to go ahead and twist this. So I'm going to put the, put the foot flat again, but keep it turned out. Take my right hand to my knee and roll the chest towards that leg. This can be where you stay. If you do want to go a little bit further, you can gently bend the back leg and grab the foot. And then oftentimes, if you are a person that is able to get elbow to the floor, you might be able to cross the ankle with the arm underneath you and then hold the foot. And that can kind of give you the measure for where elbow goes, where hand goes. You can play with also going on outside or inside of foot with the hand. It's a different rotation from the shoulder. Slowly release that. I'm going to gently push back onto the standing knee. Take your right leg, flex the toes, and bring them more towards the center of, or like more in front of the hip, less wide. And we're just going to fold over that front leg. Again, if this feels like too much, you could take your blocks, put them at a height that's re reasonable, and then start to lean. If you feel um, open enough to take full split, do it. I would suggest, as we're going to hold this a little longer, if you're taking full split, to use that block underneath. And I have the wall behind me too, which can give me a little bit more of an understanding of where this back hip starts to pull, right? I don't want it to be as open. I want to try to roll that hip down, pull that front hip back, flex through the foot. And you can kind of see where your, your hip starts to move by looking at your foot, right? Is it turning out? What are the, what's the ball of your foot doing? You can take the arms above the head with this one if you're upright. And lift the chest up, opposite hand, opposite elbow. Wave-like breathing. Let's take one more breath. On your exhale, you're going to slowly bring your hands down to support you. Start to lift out of that bend of the knee. You're going to take it back, put both knees down, and then take a few cat cows. So going to the right and left if you want, just doing the up to down. You might decide to reverse the breathing to really switch up your pattern of breathing. That's normal. See what changes. See what shifts emotionally, mentally. You're just being a, a witness to it, right? You're noticing. Let's take that up dog again. So you're going to lean forward. Stretch through the feet.
hips back. Take your left foot, step it on the outside of your left hand. So just remember initially with this, you want your hips to be able to slope down. You want your hands under your shoulders and you wanna start with your heel of your foot on the outside of the heel of your, right, of your left hand. And we're gonna keep the knee from going out for now. Keep it hugged in. Chest more forward in this, in this moment. Notice if one hip starts to pull more forward than the other. Just keep trying to create stability there. It's really to help you isolate where the stretch is happening. Our body's gonna always go in the easiest direction of movement. So if you're trying to isolate a place that's, it doesn't normally hit, because it always moves a different way. Find the structure first. Take a full breath. Let's try turning the toes out. Maybe rolling to the outer edge of the foot and you can go wide. And again, this is a great place for blocks as an option. If you wanted to come a little bit lower but not quite to the floor. I find it more challenging to maintain my focus in places where I'm not able to focus on the engagement, the movement, all of that other stuff that the more flow-based style classes or just the active classes give you. So find a point mentally that you can really land in. Like where are you at now? See if you can maintain it. If you haven't already started to lift up, play with the twisting aspect of this. All right, so taking the hand underneath the eye, pulling the chest open. You might decide to go one step further, bending the back leg, grabbing the foot. Oh man, this side's way tighter for me. Grabbing the inside with the shoulder rolling in is interesting, or grabbing the pinky side can let the chest open a little bit more. You might have um, the impulse to kind of back bend away, which can feel good. I prefer staying a little bit more in line with the spine and the hips to get that quad really open. Hmm. 
the intensity of the stretch is very interesting, right? It's a different kind of intensity than stamina. See if you can sit with it. Don't push past too far, but notice that feeling of intensity if it's there. And just allow it to exist. Okay, slowly release the foot if you held, held it. We're going to start to slowly come up, move the hips back. Walk your foot a little bit more in front of the hip line rather than going so wide. This is our half split, and you can stay with this. If you want to go full, take a block if you want. I would su definitely suggest it because it's going to prevent you from, it's going to give you more control. We don't want the hips to start to wiggle open. I'm going to do my arms over the head with opposite hand, opposite elbow. Almost there. Let's take another big breath. When you're ready to exit out, if you feel like you need a little bit more time, you can always take it, but slowly start to get that leg to come back in space. And again, let's just move through some cat cows. So arching the spine, feeling the front of the hips fold, and then rounding up and in. Maybe take some circles around. Come to the tips of the fingers. Just allow that movement to open spaces for yourself. Let's take another up dog. So I'm going to let the hips come down and let's let the shoulders shrug towards the ears in this one as long as your low back feels okay. Let the head swing. Go ahead, slowly lift the hips up and back. Let's take an elongated child's pose again, just stretching through the arms. Good, slowly roll up, come to your seat. You can put the block underneath your butt again if that was really resonating with you. We're gonna play with moving into some stretch for the arms. We're gonna do cow face arms and um, then we're gonna work with our strap and our Maybe our broomstick. We'll do one or the other. Um, you're going to take the right arm above the head. Put the hand right in between the shoulder blades. Take that other hand to the top arm and just see if you can get that, hand, that elbow right to the top. And just pause there. You can move around a little bit. I tend to like to side bend. It helps me get into the spaces along the back ribs that feel tight. If this is working for you, you can take the bottom arm, flip the palm halfway, and then you take the hands together eventually, and you could totally use your strap to get that grip so you have something to hold on to. And this bottom arm is going to be rotating in, top arm, out. 
And just notice where, where the feelings are. Breathe into them, let them exist. slowly release shrug it out and we'll go to the other side so you're going to take that left arm on the top take a moment with just that side do you want to block babe mm-hmm. and then for the bottom arm hand out flip the palm halfway and see if that helps you And you might have to use a strap on one side and not the other. It's very normal to have a little bit of asymmetry here. But having something to hold on to is very helpful. And then just allowing the breath to expand the space in front of the chest. And I talk about contact points a lot. So think about what's, your, what's engaging with what even if it's not like actively squeezing like your hands, like the back of the head and that top arm can push towards each other a little bit. Not aggressively, just a little bit. The bottom hand at the back, lean into it. The floor and the feet. Okay, slowly release this side, shrug that out. So here we're gonna try to take our strap and we might have to move a little bit. So we're gonna try to, if you have a, a broomstick, you can use that and you're gonna make sure it's long enough for your shoulders. If it's not long enough, a strap can really be helpful. We're essentially, and I'll show from the front, essentially we're just going to go up and back and then up and around and this shouldn't feel like torture right so you go wider for more accessibility in that movement so like Gavin and I's distance of the hands can be very very different and you can kind of test it you might have one shoulder that has a tougher time with the width that you've chosen. So take it really slow. And you can go narrower if you start to feel the space is opening up. And if you feel a spot in there that's like getting you a little bit of something interesting sensationally, stay with it. Breathe into it and then move through it. We're going to go for a few more breaths, so take your time.
God, maybe one more circle forward. And then trying to take it again on the way back. Nice. So again, put that down when you're ready. Shrug out the shoulders for a moment. We're gonna do a camel pose just to see if we can get that chest space a little bit more lifted, lifting out of that low spine. And then we're gonna try to do reverse prayer and see how that goes. See if we've made some space. So again, I'm gonna be on my blanket, but you can do this in a position that's comfortable. And I'm gonna actually use a block between my knees today to make sure I'm stabilizing, squeezing towards the center. Use both of them for you. It's just not wide enough. There you go. I'm also going to be tucking the balls of my feet down today, but you can also do tops of the feet down. Hands to low spine. Lift the chest up. Make sure you're not sticking the butt out. Pull the front of the pelvis up. It's not tucking under. It's just supporting it. Throw it open. And we could do this against the wall too, which we might do a second set actually to show you that. Head heavy. Chest up. You can grab the feet if you want, but just keep lifting the heart up. Good, slowly lift. Let's take a seat just to give us a break, head heavy. Shake it, no, no, no. Okay, now if you have a wall that you're practicing next to, definitely do it against the wall. If not, you can just repeat. We're gonna just move our blanket right up against it, still using the blocks between the knees. And in this, you're actually gonna try to get as close as you can. Full pelvis pressed against the wall. Tops of toes or bottoms of feet, whatever resonates. Hands to low spine like normal. Look up the wall, chest up, throw it open. So you're gonna push down into the floor hips to the wall, chest climbs up the wall. Notice if you have one side that's leaning to the wall more than the other. Try to breathe evenly through the shape or notice where it doesn't feel even. And you could lean back for the feet. Just remember to keep going up. Good, slowly lift up. Take a seat, head heavy. Okay, let's try this reverse prayer. So I'll face uh, my back to you guys and Gavin can just face where he is if he's comfortable with that. So you're gonna take your hands, oops, go a little bit farther. You're gonna take your hands out, flip the palms, start to bring them together behind the back. And you can start with the backs of your hands facing towards your back. So, and as you do that, it can just let you open the chest a little bit more. And then from there, you're gonna to try to flip the fingers towards each other and make the fingers go up the back. Now you may not get as far this way Right, but if you can, crossing the thumbs and trying to get those knuckles for the full palm together and the elbows drawing a little bit more back. Take a big full breath in. Exhale, release that position. Shake the arms out. Good, okay, so now we're gonna use the wall a little bit more. So if you can find a space against the wall to use, definitely work there. You could just do this um, away from the wall too, but uh, the wall helps us if you wanted to use like your hand to the foot. We're gonna put the blanket right up against the wall. We're gonna do a lunge with one leg forward and the other shin is gonna be pressed against the wall. So take the left shin for now, knee back against the wall. Right now I have my knee in the front of the ground. The shin is gonna be flush, so you're trying not to turn out the back leg. You can use blocks too to help you get into this. And you're gonna put one foot down in front of you. So you can kind of see like if I was holding the foot, but the wall is gonna do that for me and then I can kind of choose where to go next, right? So leaning into the hands can be it. I'm already feeling a pretty significant stretch here. 
But if I wanted to test things further, I can go a little higher on the blocks. The more I move into this, where my hips go higher up, or my chest goes higher up, I'll start to feel my hips swiveling, so I have to pull that right hip back even more, and then lift from the front of my belly. I might come a little higher. And I might come a little higher to the point where my heel and my butt cheek are towards each other and I'm pulling up the front of the pelvis. This can also turn into a back bend eventually, so keep playing with what you're working on. You might lean into the, to the front foot and then slowly lift your arms up and reach for the wall, flipping the hands and trying to hug the elbows in and lift the chest up. And eventually you might be able to crawl your hands all the way back and grab the foot. But giving yourself a little bit of leverage up. Okay, from here. You're gonna keep this back leg how it is. We're gonna take a pigeon front leg. So you're gonna wiggle your right foot across. And you could always flatten long to pigeon if this is too extreme. Your knee is gonna be wide. And then you're gonna to start to go down. You can always lift up higher. So because this leg is bent behind you, you might not be able to square the hip right now. And we might not be able to go as low. So putting a block underneath that front hip can really help. No low back, extreme, extreme stuff, right? Make sure this doesn't feel crunchy. And just keep adjusting things so they feel more squared off, right? Hip behind you, front of the hip, so you're not leaning to the right or the left too much. I'm going to add a layer in just a little bit farther with a twist. So I'm going to take my left arm underneath like I'm threading the needle, but then I'm going to bend the elbow and just push a little bit with both hands, kind of like a prayer twist. If you want to play with going a little farther upright, you could come back up to the top, right? And eventually this can help you work into that king pigeon if you can reach back and look for the foot. Okay, to exit, you're gonna slowly lean into that front foot bend the back knee out and just slowly come out of it. Let's take both legs in front and for a moment just turn out the feet, mush through the thighs. Lean forward for a moment. I like to crack the toe knuckles. Okay, let's do the other side. So that was the left leg back on that side. So now we're gonna do the right leg back. So shin completely flush against the wall. Make sure you have something soft underneath your knee. Then take your foot. It could be a little bit more like lizard with the front foot wider. If you can go on the inside of the left hand though, kind of work towards that. And then stay with that if that feels okay. Again, blocks are helpful. Gives you a little bit more to work with from the floor. You might eventually push up a little higher.
You can also do the arms we've been playing with above the head, framing the head. Maybe you wanna play with the back bend, so fingertips to the wall. Just make sure that you're not crunching your low spine. You're trying to pull up and lift out of that space. And if you're using the wall, you're using to get more leverage out of that space too. Okay, take another breath. Slowly start to work your hands down. So you're folded more and we're gonna take that pigeon on the other side. So again, you can always lengthen the whole shape out if you don't wanna have your leg bent like this if it's too much. Heel crosses over, it pulls more towards the front of the hip. I'm lifting myself up on a block to be a little bit higher. And then on this side for me, it's definitely a little bit tighter. It feels like I have less room to move places. So I'm gonna hold my foot with my hand and give myself a little bit more to sustain the shape, the words, words anchoring in the structure of the shape. You could also like wrap something around the foot and help not pull it necessarily forward, but keep it from moving back so you're not on top of that front knee. Again, blocks are great. So you can always come to a block. Give yourself a little bit of that twist if you did it on the other side. I can't go as deep with it on this side, so I, but I can definitely move through the torso some. And then if you like lifting up a little higher eventually to help you work towards your king pigeon, I wouldn't necessarily say go for the foot yet, but if you feel like it and you feel like the space is there, try to reach back without having to go around the shoulder with the foot supported by the wall. Let's slowly start to exit. So you're gonna lean into the front hip. Swim that leg behind you and in front of you. Let's sit on the blanket if you have one. Take the legs in front. And we're just gonna do a seated forward fold. So if you want to, you can put some blocks on your chest, underneath your chest. And then go down. You can even take a block down like that for the head. Do you want a block for your head? I like to have a block to reach towards too. So I'll put one right in front of my feet and that also keeps the feet from like pronating and supinating and just gives them a little bit more to push into like the floor is there. If you don't have blocks and you do wanna feel more supported, putting pillows on your legs is also a really great, just nice and easy restorative fold. But hopefully you're not feeling like you're gripping to get here. You wanna be able to just drop into it. So you have to close the gaps. 
put something in between those spaces that are negative to give you a little bit more to, to lean into. Okay, take another breath. Slowly start to lift out of the fold. Then we're gonna take the bend of the knees out, put the feet together, and then fold again. You can also, I guess you could put the feet against this block and put the head on it. But if you don't need anything to rest the head, just let the body hang. Gently roll up. I'm going to take the hands to the knees, pull them in. Slide your butt forward. We're going to do one more posture um, before we get to rest in Shavasana. So we're going to lay all the way down on the back. You can let your head rest on the pillow if that resonates. And then you're going to take one knee in, squeeze it to the chest. And you're going to cross the leg over, scooch the butt a little bit behind you to give you some space. You could put a block underneath that knee if that's comfortable. You can bend the bottom leg and grab the foot from the big toe side and then use that to twist. Breathe into the low belly. Release those bottom, bottom ribs. Return to center. You can do both knees in if you want. And then you're gonna switch the legs. So take that other leg in when you're ready. Scooch the hips to the opposite way we're gonna lean. You're gonna again take the block, put it right where that knee would go. Bending the bottom foot if you wanna, or the knee to grab the foot if you want. When you do it this way, it gives you, again, just contact points to feel out. So I can use my legs just enough to move my torso open. And then I animate it with the breath. Take one last breath here. Slowly bring it all back in. If there's anything left you wanna kinda of work through, play with that. 
If you're ready for Shavasana, start to lengthen. Legs long. Arms by the sides. You could also end in the Supta Baddha Konasana with the legs nice and open. You could end in a supported bridge, right? Placing that block on the low spine, right where that sacrum is. Wherever you're landing, use the time in your last bit of meditation here just to scan, to notice. Let the body kind of reorganize through the stretches. And if you want to go beyond that, you could even practice a little bit of that creative visualization, right? How do we manifest the things that we want in our life and the, or just in our days, right? Keeping it really simple, like what do you want your next hour to look like? And think of every detail, every little bit of it. In doing so, you're giving yourself access to that energy and the ability to actually create it, to make it happen. Let's take one final breath together. Exhale everything out. Fill up with a full inhale. And exhale. Thank you so much for joining us. Namaste. Namaste.